okay so what we have understood about three dimensional rigid body rotation is that there is an angular velocity associated with the rigid body's motion this angular velocity can be obtained in at least two different ways one is by computing phi dot n which is related to the rotation tensor which links the uh, body fixed coordinate system at times t and times t plus delta t and from this rotation tensor we can compute phi dot n we can also compute the same angular velocity vector by looking at the rotation tensor which links the observer frame to the body fix coordinate system at any time t and for that we derive the formula that the rotation or rather the angular velocity is given by the axial vector of this tensor r0 dot multiplying r0 transpose this is a multiplication of two tensors and we then we showed that this quantity is the angular velocity tensor which is actually skew symmetric and therefore we can compute an axial vector of it and the axial vector is precisely the angular velocity of the rigid body you can use any of these definitions though in practical terms this definition is usually more useful well what are the properties of this angular velocity vector well most importantly it's a vector remember some time ago we were discussing how to measure the rate of change of orientation right we were discussing how to measure this and one of the proposals was why don't you simply use the rotation tensor of the kind r0 dot and we said that's a tensor and why should we use a tensor to measure something which can be done by a vector so that's what we have achieved is that we have been able to now measure the rate of change of orientation of a rigid body through a vector the angular velocity vector because it's a vector you can add and subtract these angular velocities they obey the usual laws of vector algebra and this is very useful as i will now show you through an example so the example that i have in mind will show us the application of the concept of relative angular velocities for this let's consider this picture let's say i have a rigid body b1 which in this case is this astronaut over here okay, let's lose the light of pen this astronaut is rigid body b1 and he is observed by another rigid body b2 which is this other astronaut over here so this guy is observing this other chap and he is measuring an angular velocity omega 1 2 okay so b2 measures angular velocity of b1 to be omega one with respect to 2 it's some vector at the same time this astronaut is being tracked by this spacecraft which has an attached body fixed coordinate system called e0 right so that's the e0 and the rate of change of orientation of the astronaut 2 which is b2 with respect to the spacecraft is given by omega 20 so we can write down b2 has angular velocity omega 20 with respect to the body fixed coordinate system e0 and the question we are asked is find out the angular velocity of this astronaut astronaut 1 b1 with respect to the spacecraft how would you do that well we know that angular velocity is a vector therefore we can say that the angular velocity of 
body 1 with respect to the coordinate frame E0 is simply the angular velocity of body 1 with respect to the angular velocity of body 2 plus the angular velocity of body 2 with respect to the body 0 or the coordinate frame E0 and that is my answer. So, I could do this very simply only because angular velocity is a vector and can be added. If I tried to measure rate of change of orientation with a rotation tensor or rather the rate of change of a rotation tensor, then I could not do this because if I had tried to write something like r of 1 with respect to 0 dot is equal to r of 1 with respect to 2 dot plus r of 2 with respect to 0 dot, this is absolute garbage because rotation tensors cannot be added and be expected to give you rotation tensors. But angular velocity is a vector and can be added just in the same way as you used to add veloc relative velocities to get the total velocities. So that is a very good application and very useful application. So let me end this slide by uh, a kind of an important comment. The problem with dynamics is the same physical concept is often spelt out in very different ways. It is a question of language then. So for example, over here I have written down rigid body B1 is observed by another rotating rigid body B2. I could just as well have said that B1 is measured by a rotating coordinate system E double prime. You need not know who this astronaut is. All you need to know is there is a coordinate frame attached to him. You just need to know his BFCS. Okay? And over in the in the previous specification, I had said B2 is measured to have angular velocity omega 2 0 in a coordinate system E0. I could have said it. E double prime rotates at this angular velocity with respect to the CS E0. Okay, I have made an error here. This should be 2. And then we could ask, find the rotation rate of B1 with respect to E0. Well, while previously I had said, find the angular velocity. So, angular velocity, rotation rate, all the same thing. But because different words are used, often we get confused. So, that is just to illustrate how I can say the same problem in two seemingly different ways.